Welcome back to the IELTS vocabulary course. This is lesson number seven, and it's all about inferring the meaning of a word through context. Sometimes you don't know what a word means, but you can still usually guess the meaning. You can at least come close to guessing the meaning. And this course is for people who are hoping to improve their vocabulary. At an intermediate or advanced level. So there's a playlist with all the other IELTS lessons, and it's good for preparing for the test, but that's not the only purpose. It's also good just for anybody hoping to improve their vocabulary. Here's a little introduction to today's lesson How can we infer the meaning of a new word? Sometimes we come across a word which we have not yet learned. In this situation, we can infer the meaning of the word by context. We can ask, what is the paragraph about? What is the sentence about? And what information comes before and after the word? We can also consider the word's function. Is it a noun, adjective, verb, adverb, or something else? If it's an adverb, for example, then we know that it's answering the question, how? An adverb describes an action, usually. So, the function of speech is also important when we're trying to infer the meaning. Here's an example. Imagine we don't know the word coherently, and we read this paragraph. He writes coherently on the subject, beginning by looking at the basic facts before discussing. Progressively complex theories without once confusing his readers. So it has ly at the end, so we can see that it's an adverb. It comes after writes, so it's describing how he writes. How does he write? He writes coherently. And if we look at the rest of the information, we can see at the end it says without once confusing his readers. He doesn't confuse his readers. So that must mean his writing is clear and easy to understand. And that's the definition of coherent. It means sticking together, cohering, marked by an orderly, logical, and aesthetically consistent relation of parts. So that's a complex definition, but it basically just means that the writing is clear and simple to understand. Coherent. Today, we're going to do a similar exercise with all of these words. So, take a look. There's 22 words. How many of them have you seen before? How many of them do you not know? If you don't know the word and you're just looking at the list, it's going to be very hard to guess the meaning. However, when we see it in the context of a sentence or paragraph, we can infer the meaning by the context. So let's begin. Number one, nocturnal. Can you infer the meaning from context? The remarkable success of Simon Weber's book on owls, bats, and foxes, and other nocturnal creatures, A Call in the Dark, is probably not surprising in view of the popularity of his recent telev television series, Night Animals. Wow, that's a lot of information. He wrote a book. Called A Call in the Dark. It's similar to his television series called Night Animals. We look at the animals owls, bats, and foxes. What do they have in common? All of those animals come out at night. So, what does nocturnal mean? Of, relating to, or occurring in the night, most active at night. So, nocturnal creatures means animals that are active at night. Oh, by the way,、uh, feel free to write these words in a notebook so you don't forget. I think that would be very helpful. Sites. On first glance, it kind of looks like cities, but it's sites. In addition to describing his own findings, he cites the research carried out by others. Including Wright and Lawson in the 1990s, and discusses where they might have gone wrong with some of their assumptions. 
So we're talking about research. When you're in、um, school and you need to write an essay, how do you give credit to other people's research? You cite the research. We can see here, it means to quote or to refer to. So, cite is a verb. He cites the research carried out by others. The next one, stacks. The room was extremely untidy, with stacks of books and piles of paper all over the floor and unwashed coffee cups on the tables. So we can see that stacks has something to do with books and, and paper. Well, there's piles of paper and there's stacks of books. So if you know what piles of paper means, then you can probably guess what stacks of books means. Stack is the, the word that we use to talk about books that are layered one upon another. So it's an unorderly. Or, sorry, it's an orderly pile. Yeah. A synonym could be a heap. You could have a heap of books or a stack of books. Feet. These are not the feet at the bottom of your legs. This is a totally different feat. This is a remarkable feat considering the complexity of the subject and the science that is often involved. Okay. This. What is this? Something to do with、um, science, and it's also complex. So, what could it mean? Feet. Well, it's essentially a thing. This is a remarkable thing. This is a remarkable feat. But the definition of feat is here an act or accomplishment of great courage, skill, or imagination. Something that was very hard to do or accomplish. Climbing Mount Everest is a feat. Completing this research paper is a feat. So, how did I infer the meaning of that? Because I knew it was about science and a complex subject. Prolific. He was an extremely prolific author, writing three or four novels a year, as well as many short stories. What kind of word is prolific? It's an adjective because it describes. A noun. He's a prolific author. And the second part of the sentence tells us more information about him as an author. He writes three or four novels a year. Do you think that's a lot of novels to write in a year? I think it is. So, prolific has to have something to do with writing a lot of novels, right? Here's the definition prolific. Producing or characterized by abundant works or results. So, yeah, somebody who writes a lot is prolific. Arduous. The journey across the hills was long and arduous, much of it having to be done on foot in temperatures of over 40 degrees Celsius. You may struggle with that pronunciation, arduous, arduous.、Um, so it was a journey. Was it an easy journey or a hard journey? It was hard.、Uh, so, arduous, meaning something that is very hard, difficult, demanding great effort or labor. Seven, forage. Foxes are a common sight in our towns and cities where they forage in dustbins, in gardens, and on waste ground. Okay, so we can see that this is a verb. Foxes, they forage. Okay, so what do you think foxes do? What kind of activities do foxes do? Do they read books? No. Do they make videos? No. Basically, foxes just search for food. So that's what forage means to wander in search of food. So foxes are foraging in gardens. Elusive. The cuckoo, that's a funny name, <laughs> the cuckoo is a rare and elusive bird which is often heard but rarely seen. Okay, we look at the, the other information. 
It's rare. It's often heard, but rarely seen. So elusive has something to do with a thing being hard to see. And it's also an adjective because it's describing the bird. What kind of bird? An elusive bird. So elusive means difficult to define or describe. Elusive. Exhaustive. Number nine. The research they carried out was exhaustive. So by the time the project was complete, they knew everything they had to know about their subject. Okay, so it's an adjective. It's describing the research. And the second or the latter part of the sentence shows us that it was, they did a lot of research. They knew everything about the subject. If you know everything about a subject, that means you spent a lot of time studying it. And that's what exhaustive means. Treating all parts or aspects without omission. Thorough. Exhibiting all the facts or arguments. Exhaustive. Now, this list of words that I'm presenting, it's not an exhaustive list. There's thousands of English words that you probably don't know, and I probably don't know. A lot of native speakers, they don't know all the words. There's just too many. But we, even me, if I don't know the word, I can infer through the context. It's very rare when I see a new word, but I cannot infer the meaning. I can usually do it, but sometimes not. Sometimes I got to use a dictionary. Number 10, mediocre. The hotel we stayed in was a mediocre place with small rooms, rather dull food, and an unsurprising view of the car park. Okay, mediocre describes the hotel. Adjective. What other information do we have about the hotel? It was small. Food was not good. And it had a bad view. So we cannot say it was a beautiful place. It was not a pretty place. It was a mediocre place. Of, un, of ordinary or undistinguished quality. Synonym, average. Mediocre hotel. Imperative. Water is essential for human life. So it is imperative we make sure that in the future there is enough for everyone. Can you guess the meaning of imperative? Try to use some of the techniques we talked about, okay? So it means necessary or urgent, um, something that must be done. It is imperative that we preserve our water. So this is the first part of the video. We did half the words from nocturnal to imperative. And the next 11 words are going to be in another video. I encourage you to watch that one as well. Check out the playlist for the vocabulary course because each video has a different tip, different focus. And I really think that if you uh, focus on some of these techniques, you can improve your vocabulary quite a lot. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Good luck studying.